I'm going to touch the object of worship, the object of wisdom of God, the object of being worshiper, and how we partake, how we partake in a building of the kingdom of God with all these three involved. And the name of the sermon is this. If you are not invested, you're, we you're wasted. If your life is not invested, your life is wasted. The greatest value on earth that just we might have when we observe is not the money, is not the precious stones, is not the gold. The greatest value on earth is the life of human. Without human being on earth, all this makes no sense. For all this gold and precious stones and all these treasures that God created in His wisdom for human are for human. And the precious thing on earth, precious thing on earth is the life of human. Life of the man. And when God is calling us to invest something in His kingdom, of, cor of course He is not searching for our money. Of course, of course he's not searching for something that we can just give things material type. He's looking for the precious thing. He's looking for our lives. And except the life, you can't really give God nothing because he is the creator of all. He's the creator of all things of gold and, and the silver and everything that is surrounding you. He owns these things. The only life is the life that... That you have, He gave you for you to possess it. And He's not taking it back unless you want to sit it, sit it like a seed in His kingdom, to sow it like a seed in His kingdom. And He's calling and He's asking, Would you like to, would you like to have your life invested? Would you like to put it in the soil of my kingdom so your life would produce much fruit and bear much fruit for eternity? Would you like to invest yourself in something great, in something big? So when you look back at the throne of God and the, at the seed of Christ on your life, you're not looking back with a regret. You're not looking back with a great loss. But you're grateful that you made this choice and you sowed your life in the kingdom of God. And of course, when we give our lives to Jesus Christ, when we invest our lives, when we put ourselves on the altar, an altar that he, that he made for us. When we sign off from our own perspectives, from our own system of values, and accept everything that is His. When we remove this ego out of our lives, out of the center of our lives, and accept a God-centered life. God-centered style of life. Then he calls us next. He calls us to go and serve the people. Again, he values the life of human. The greatest value is the value of the soul. And then he says, go and serve. Go and serve to the world. And shine like a light and be like a soul for this world. And bring the gospel to the ends of the earth. So others might be touched by me through you. And others might be called by me through you. And others might be invested in my kingdom. So this old great and big family of mine will be with me in eternity with the riches that I prepare for them. I believe that God is calling us to the great glory today. He's calling us to the great glory but there is no way in to this realm unless we refuse to follow our own motives, follow our own thoughts, our own visions, our own dreams. Unless we lay ourselves down on the altar of His will and become the holy sacrifice for Him. You listening to me, we are called to be great. We are called to live in His glory. 
And I believe today is the day when we're going to make a choice. Uh, my heart is literally trembling on this place. I feel like God is behind my back. He is whispering through me to you. And you're hearing his words right now. He's calling you back. Yes, you're named the Christian. Yes, you're baptized and you're in a covenant with the Lord. But something shifted. Something happened. Life's got dusted. Calling was buried. And now you're just sitting and you don't know how to deal with your life. Trying here, a little bit there, a little bit here. It works out just for you. But you still don't know what is the purpose. What are you here? And God is telling you, you will be knowing your purpose. When you lay your life down for me. When you make a choice to accept my will. To be moved with my compassion. This is what he's telling today. We're going to check for the background, uh, for the background of this message. Uh, and we will, we will go to the Old Testament. We will go to the time when uh, first temple was being built. When God called his servant David. To be his worshiper and when David was doing his part in this. And he passed this business to his son Solomon and he finished what, what was in the heart of David. We're talking about big temple. As I said, we'll be talking about worship, worshiping God. We'll be talking about to worship and be worshiper. Because without this, without this word, without this quality of the heart and the lifestyle, there is no any other way to please God. To be invested in his kingdom. So the life of the worshiper is the life of the person who is invested, totally sold out for his kingdom. So and this is a David. This is a shepherd David. He's a little boy. He's worshiping God from his youngest age. And he's seeking after God and he's searching for him. And he's asking, who are you God? And God is revealing himself to him. And he's writing things down. And now he's in passion with God. And he's in love with God. And he has this intimate relationship with him. And God takes him out of this flock and he puts him a king as a king on the on the kingdom of Israel and now David is a king and he 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 did not forget about God he's still he's still in love with him he still worships yes he doesn't do mistakes but he's he, he he's getting back up and and he's still in love with God and his love and his relationship is growing and growing and growing and one morning he wakes up you know and he goes like wow there's something I just don't feel right. I woke up in such a nice house that I built for myself. But my God, my best friend from my life, he still is living in this tent. I don't feel right about this. I have to do something. He's calling his friend Nathan, the prophet, and have, they have a discussion. And Nathan says, whatever is on your heart, do it. God is with you. And in the night, God picks up, picks up to Nathan and he, he tells them his will about this conversation they had with David before and he said go and tell to my servant David oh my God God is saying I never mentioned through the generations you will not find this in the scripture I never spoke this through the prophets I never mentioned mentioned this to the Moses nobody knew this I never said I need a house I never said you have to build me a house I never said in the generations before until you, David, I need a house. But as you said, the Lord need a house. I'm going to establish your house forever. This is what God is saying through the Nathan, the prophet, to the David. And David is just crashing down on his knees and he's crying. You can read this. It's, it's in, a, I believe, book of, uh, second book of Samuel, chapter 7. whole chapter is about this. And... What's the deal here? David is a worshiper. He's searching for the heart of God. Daily, daily, daily. His relationships, his relationships are growing. And one morning he wakes up and he's got so high in love with God that God don't, does not need to mention that he needs something. But David himself has this idea, his crazy passionate dream that he wants to build a house for God. And he expresses this idea to his friend. And the new story begins. 
the new age worship for the whole world begins just from this idea of the worshiper. I'm saying again, God did mention he wants a house. David did not see this in a dream. He just woke up and he felt in his heart that, that he wants to do something for God. He wants to, to invest himself in something that will have a value. Have a value in eternal life. And God didn't, didn't ask him for that and God evaluated this so, so, so high. His relationship was so big and so close to this moment that he made this decision. Well, all life that David had, actually, he was, he was he spent in wars and wars and wars. Too many fights, too many wars. And he collected so much silver, so much gold, so much precious stones he collected. But <laughs> he did it all, for not just for himself. Again, all this was just for the one the dream that he had in his heart like a worshiper to build a house for the Lord. And all his life actually was invested in just this idea. An idea that he, that he got, that got in his heart during the whole life. Like a pro, through the process during the whole life when he was worshiping God and loving God daily. And all these this investments, all this Big collections went into this business to build a house. And he's passing this down to the Solomon. His, his son and Solomon is working on it. Solomon is doing what David did. And he's even multiplying all these riches and investing all this in the, in the house of the Lord. And they're building for the seven years and they finish. I want you to pay attention at how God in his wisdom works works on earth his his will he picks up the worshipers he picks up the guys who are not educated who just a simple man like you and me flesh and bone but who really searching after the heart of God to to know him more to see him to to have his to have the understanding of who he is and then one day they are influenced by the dream that they are just given in their hearts to do something crazy for his kingdom and he chooses he chooses this man David and he pours out his wisdom on a Solomon and they both partake in this in this huge work so when God wants to do his his great works on earth he will choose two types of men he will choose the worshiper and he will choose the one who is anointed by the wisdom. And actually, if we be more correct, be more specific, I believe that the worshipers of God, the people who are after the heart of God, who are seeking Him daily and loving Him daily, they are vessels prepared and clean vessels for His divine wisdom. And when you and I we will be worshiping God on our knees in our secret room, Day after day after day, some kind of crazy idea will hit my heart and your heart. And this idea will be supplied by the, by the knowledge that you never had before, how to put it in life. And you will be shocked how, shocked, shocked how God is, is trusting to you. And as you will be taking the step by step, moment by moment to put this idea in life, God will be supplying you. He will be supplying you like he supplied the idea of David through all those riches that he collected through the years. Solomon just inherited everything that David collected and he inherited even the vision that David had. He inherited, he inherited the blueprints that David had. What he did, he had to be anointed by the wisdom to organize it and put it in order so the work of God could be accomplished. I believe that times... Time is near, a time is here like Jesus said when he was speaking to Samaritan woman. Time is near when true worshipers, they will be receiving great wisdom from God. They will, will be receiving great, great plans, great, great dreams. If you can say that. 
great project and you will be standing before God one day and he will hit your heart with some kind of big idea for his kingdom that you can accomplish and you will look at yourself and you will be just shocked because you won't be able to according to your capability and then when you will make a one little small step towards to this goal he will give you more he will give you more people he will give you he will give you more riches more gold more silver more everything to accomplish what he gave you just like it happened to Solomon if you read this chapter when Solomon is building the temple you find this he took the best gold that was in kingdom he took this best, best gold and he put it on the walls of the temple. He took this best silver and he put it on the, on, in, in the temple. He took this best precious stones. And everything best was invested in this temple, in this idea, in this dream. I'm just telling you that when God is calling you for something, He's not going to supply with something cheap and something broken. He has a lot of stuff, a lot of riches, a lot of best for you. A lot of best for you. I just want to go now to the uh, uh, John. It's a chapter, chapter four, verse twenty-three. Words of Jesus. He says, "By the hour is coming, and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the spirit and truth, for the Father Father is seeking." such to worship him our is coming and it's even here Jesus says because father is already in a search his search mode is on and he is just looking and searching and hovering and seeking for people for worshipers for guys and girls who love him with all heart they don't have money probably no maybe they do they don't have education. Maybe they do. But you know what? He doesn't care at all what you have or what you don't. He cares much about who you are and not what you have. He cares about your qualities, your heart. Are you a worshiper at all? Are you spending time when no one sees you in a secret room, in a place, because you're so much in love with him? Are you doing right choices when no one sees you? But you and him, because you're so much in love with him, this is what you call to be the worshiper. When no one sees, you give every, you give your last shirt away. When no one sees, you give your shoes away. When no one sees, you spend hours and hours and hours in the prayer room. Because no one sees, it's not for somebody. It's just because you love him so much. And you just can't live another way. Because you're moved by this love to him. You're moved by this passion to him. And you don't care about day or day after. You know he will provide. He's literally carrying you on his hands when you're a worshiper. I mean, he, anyway, he's carrying you. But when you are in love with him, you are walking in this understanding that he is really carrying you. And nothing is matter. So Jesus is talking right now to this woman. He says, he picks up this idea now. They're talking about the temple again. And he picks up this idea from the temple. And he converts this idea. He, he uses the temple like a, a facade. And he takes us away. And he unwraps the truth meaning of the worship place. He says the truth meaning of the worship place is not a temple. It's a worship. It's a worship to God. That, that is what, what has a matter. He takes this example of the temple. He takes the temple away. And he puts up on the top what really matter. And they begin to talk about the worship itself. And he says the time is near and time is coming. When the true worshipers will be worshiping on every place. On every place and every time, true worshipers. And this is the people who are in a big need in the kingdom. You see, Jesus is the son of David. 
Yes, he is a root of David and he is sprinkle of David. And as his father David, by the, his bloodline, had this crazy idea to build a great temple for God where everybody can just come and worship. Gentile, not Gentile, don't care. Anybody can just come and cry, God, can you hear me? I need you tonight. And God put his seal on this temple. He said, I will hear you from this place. I don't care who you are. I will hear your prayer. I don't care. I will hear you. And that was dream of David. And Jesus was the son of David. So he's got his, this idea too. I want to build something for Father. <laughs> but he went much farther. He took this idea out of the physical place from the Israel. And he gave it to every single person on earth. He said, now everybody can come and worship to my temple. Yes, to the temple of David, you had to come. You had to spend money, buy, buy a ticket and come. That was the idea of Father David. That was a great idea. Amazing. I give you something bigger than him. I give you kind of type of worship. It's going to take all your life away. <laughs> come on. You're not going to have to come once a year to this temple to see God and maybe ask him with the list of needs that you had through all this year. You will be walking with God everywhere you go, every single second. And I don't care who you are, Gentile or Jew. I'm giving you this temple that doesn't have no borders, doesn't have no limits. I'm giving you to this access to the worship room in heaven 24-7. In the spirit and in the truth, you will be having this access to God. And this temple is available today. This is amazing. When we see the Solomon who built a house, who built a house to the Lord. And he performed all those works. And when we see when he completed it. And he's praying. He's saying, God confirm this. Where I build this house for you according to your blueprints, to your will, to your command through my father. I did invest everything that I had to. And now uh, this, this great temple is here. And great glory just came down from heaven on this temple and filled the temple. And no one could remain in the temple because glory was so big, so radical, so amazing. What I'm telling you right now, what Jesus did on the cross is much bigger than the temple that Solomon built. This kind of temple is, it's a spiritual, it's a temple in the kingdom of God, it's a church of God. It's based on the blood of the Lamb, it's based on the sacrifice of the Lamb and this temple is unshakable. And God sent His glory into His church because He just sealed the works of His hands. This is what Jesus did on the cross. We have an access to unlimited glory to God. Every single second I'm walking right now like a cloud is around me right now. I know I'm in a temple. I'm a part of the temple. I'm a part of, part of His work. And He sealed me with the spirit of glory. The other place I want you to get is... The Haggai chapter 2. We read it not a long time ago on the Friday prayer. I want to read a couple verses from here. Oh, it says here, In the seven months, on the 21st of the month, the word of the Lord came by Haggai, the prophet, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, the son of Sheltiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, the high priest, and to remain of the people saying, who is left among you who saw this temple in its former glory? And how do you see it now in comparison with it? Is this not in your eyes as nothing? Yet now be strong, Zerubbabel, says the Lord. And be strong, Joshua, the high priest. And be strong, all you people of the land, says the Lord. And work. For I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. According to the word that I co uh, covenant with you and came out of Egypt, so my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. For thus says the Lord of hosts, once more 
I will shake heaven and earth, this sea and a dry land, and I will shake all nations, and they shall come to the desire of all nations. And I will fill this temple with the glory, says the Lord of hosts. First temple of Solomon was destroyed totally. And now 70 years passed by since it was destroyed. The prophecies which were spoken by Jeremiah was fulfilled. And God is calling his people back. And he's stirring, he's stirring heart of the kings. Of the Gentile kings to send the people back and to provide them with materials, gold and silver and wood and everything needed for house to be built again. Well, and uh, these two leaders, the governor and the high priest, they become leaders of all this project and they go to build the house of the Lord according to the prophecies. And people out of captivity, they go back they are released by these gentile kings and they go after this idea after these leaders to build the house of the lord and now they come to this ruins and nothing else on it totally destroyed place and they begin to cry because the place is just so desolated and they were shocked how how bad it is and i'm asking you who is who can just leave behind this Goodwell city of Gentiles and go back into the native land which is totally destroyed and put put their life, lives down into this restoration of this temple. The only true worshipers can do this. The only guys who are just in love with God who are after whose hearts are after his dream, his prophecies, what is on his mind and they just stir up and they say we'll go. When we do something for the Lord, we're going to build this temple back. We do something with our hands and we're going to build it. And this is why God is saying here, you came here people, you get strong. You're going to build the second temple. You will be those people who will build this temple. And then he says further on, he says, the glory that I will send into this temple will be great. Will be great. You see, when, when there is nothing else, just there's nothing on the place, there's nothing built. God can't just send His glory on an empty place. The something should be built according to His will. Something should be accomplished. When He's given His plans, His ideas, His dreams, His blueprints, His supplies, they should be put in work by our hands. And when they are put in work and place is ready and the house is built, then He says, I'm going to come down and fill this with my glory. And his glory came down and then filled this temple. And what the scripture is telling me here, that there are many people, many worshipers who are doing something today. Who has idea, who have the blueprint, who have a dream. And God is telling you, do not stop doing what you're doing. You're working. You're working my works. And I'm going to supply you. I'm going to give you my thanks. I'm going to give you my help. I'm going to give you my wisdom. I'm going to give you everything it takes. Just have, have not stopped this work. Continue build the temple of God. Continue build the kingdom. Continue invest your life in the kingdom of God. We take it, we take it in our age now. We take it in the age of church now. Today, it's up to us to build a kingdom. Today, it's up to us to spread the kingdom wide to the ends of the earth. Today, it's up to us to prepare the way for the Lord. For the prophet Elijah, his calling is to prepare the way for the Lord. To build a highway so the Lord can come down on earth with the glory and fill the earth with the glory. This is what we read in Isaiah. And we are called to prepare the way. And we are called to invest our lives. And we are called to serve other people. And do it in a way, in a manner that He wants us to do. And He's going to supply us with everything that is needed. We're going to pray in a minute. Can we have worship team here?
just to bring it all to the conclusion and lend this thing down, I want to put together everything together now. I want to say that time is near, time is here. And plants are ready to be descended in your heart. And great dreams are ready to be invested in your heart by heaven. And great resources will follow. And you will be great. God will be, will be working with you and through you. Building his kingdom. But it's not going to happen with you unless you're not worshiper. I believe the time is coming when God is going to be picking up the people and He will be investing in their heart the great dreams, great ideas. And those will be worshipers. They will, they will be don't care about what is on the way. They will just go in obedience to God every day and He will supply them with a great wisdom to accomplish, to accomplish these projects, to spread the kingdom, to build the kingdom. Here's the one secret I want to share with you about the secret room. When we are all called in the kingdom and we begin our way with Christ, we find a special place to pray. We find a special time to pray and worship and see and seek Him and to know Him and read the Bible and stuff like this. But day after day, when we're doing this, oh man, this is crazy. This secret room that you having in a physical place growing into your soul it's growing into your heart it becomes part of you and now from the physical realm from the physical place it imports inside of you and you become the carrier of secret room you become the carrier of worship room you become the carrier of prayer room and God's presence and conversation with him and his glory never stopped flow through you because you had spent so much time and you got used to this and you had prepared so much this way for the Lord and your communication with him and on a high level it does not stop when you shut the door and walk out your secret room it continue on going and going and going and you become the carrier of his presence you become the carrier of his presence and he begins to talk to you more and more and you begin to respond to him more and more and more you respond to him and he responds to you and then more of his nature is released inside of you more of God is available to you more of his revelation and the knowledge of him because you are able now to take more of him you became bigger on the inside and your inside place became wider and you're carrying more and more of God now daily but it's not it God is saying you are not just a room he's saying you are temple I want to dwell in you like I dwell in the temple I want to send my glory on you like I send it on the temple when priests just couldn't stand on this place and serve no more because the cloud of glory oh my God was surrounding this place it was so mighty because God was on this place. He manifests himself this way. He says, I want you to walk in the cloud of glory daily. But it's not just, it's not, it's not just going to come down like this. It takes the work of your hands. I seal with the glory what is completed by your hands. You need to go in the secret room. You need to build relationship. You need to build communication with me. And it's not going to leave you listen flow of revelation not gonna stop you will be walking and taking the next and next and next and you will not be writing it down because it's so much it's so ridiculous to write it down it's just so much your your brain is not able to accomplish in process all this at a time it's just three or four at a time be flowing in you and you'll be just yeah i'm okay you will be just sharing the word of god with people and they will be amazed how deep this word and how deep, deeply they, this word is touching them because it's not your own. You became the temple of God. Out of the secret room, you became the temple of God. And the glory of God is manifested in your life. And I believe this hour is came. And the Lord is seeking for people on whom He will be pouring out His wisdom. Listen, I hear this word first time ever.
we always hear the word that God will be pouring out his power right his great glory but I'm telling you I hear this word first time ever God will be pouring out his wisdom and his wisdom will be filling you in such a great way you will be seeing a weather in the world decades ahead you will be seeing a weather in your own life and all things that will come to pass according to his light of his wisdom 10 years ahead five years ahead you will be wise you will be you will be knowing everything like a Daniel and all those three three friends of him therefore they were just impacted with wisdom of God this is why they were there they were 10 times smarter than all those gentile guys and they believe this time is coming when he will be pouring out his wisdom his knowledge his understanding on us and we will be just amazed and shocked how great he is how mighty he is and with this wisdom we will be accepting his projects for this time for us to accomplish for the personal life for the home group for the church we will be accepting the project that he has given us and we will be doing we will be putting our our hands in this project and the glory will be covering this project and his supplies will be going into this the best on the earth will be going into this and it will be happening I believe it will be happening the time is here he is looking for people who he can entrust the wisdom great wisdom I remind you he chose to Solomon and he anointed him with the wisdom to build the temple yes he chose the David the worshiper who could just come to understanding that God needs the house to live that's the kind of love relationship thing but as Solomon was able to accomplish because he was anointed with a wisdom and God is ready to entrust mighty projects I believe to people who worship him come on let's just stand up